Uh, we're going to be in Matthew today. Uh, we'll be talking about, uh, again, angels, not so much shepherds and wise men. We'll finally get to the wise men. I'll talk a little bit about them. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're, we're grateful for our time together. Again, we're grateful for opportunity to learn and study more of your word. Uh, may we bring you glory in our lives and in our understanding. In Jesus' name. And we won't talk about the genealogy, that's for another time, but we'll get into chapter 1 of Matthew, verse 18. Uh, this came about. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph was a, her husband, and again, this is uh, going back to the idea of what the Jewish betrothal or engagement period was you make your commitment you're married but that's not nothing is done until the man makes a house for his wife which may be an addition to uh, the family house uh, it would be in the local uh, community where the local family was so they would have just added addition to parents house so that would take about a year to go through and so, uh, anyway, that explains that gap in there. Then the, the official final aspect of it was the wedding itself, uh, which was a very, uh, again, a community affair. Everybody came together to have, a, uh, to have a wedding and celebrate. So there's about a year in here. Now she, Joseph finds out Mary is, uh, is pregnant and he was a righteous man, so he was faithful to the law, uh, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So he was he was compassionate as well, um, and so he wanted to kind of divorce this uh, her quietly. But then he he thought about this, and he started he considered it. Or uh, what's the word I want here? The uh, uh, that's not it. Uh, if I can find it, he contemplated, or he. Uh, and decided is the idea. He, this is what he decided, and it appears he may have decided, no, I'm going to stick this, stick with this. And then an angel appears uh, to him, and uh, again he may decide the other way too. So just it can go either way. But uh, in verse 20, Joseph son of David, do not be afraid. There's that that phrase again when an angel appears. Uh, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And, and all this took uh, place to fulfill uh, what Isaiah had written, and then uh, Joseph did what, he, uh, what the angel asked him to do. So uh, he commits himself to this, He's saving Mary in a sense, but he's also bearing with Mary the public disgrace. This is an honor-shame culture. And Mary being pregnant in this fashion has shamed the family, has shamed the community, has shamed the town. And so Joseph is stepping in and helping to relieve some of that shame, but also taking it up with her. So he is going to share in her shame. That kind of makes an interesting uh, thoughts as you go down the road as to uh, how he raised Jesus, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and tell the story. You know, this is this is the right thing to do. This is the thing God wants me to do. So I'm going to commit myself to God, which I've already done, and to Mary, and to bear that shame. Sure. Do you? I can't ever wonder if he believed Mary before the angel. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know that's you kind of indicated that he is wrestling and decided. So I'm wondering, did he believe her? Yeah, before I, that angel came. Yeah, you had to wonder. You know, yeah. apparently, you know, with I'm thinking about divorce, but then he sat down and started to yeah, you know, an angel. And uh, what's important here is to go back to Genesis and look at Joseph there. And so, if I get this confused. Pardon me, but Joseph in Genesis is a, has dreams. Now, no angel appears, but he has dreams. 
Now, the first two are about himself, the next two are interpreting the dreams of the uh, prisoners and then finding the dream of the Pharaoh. Uh, Joseph, in the New Testament, same thing. He has dreams. I think this is the only one, uh, the first one is the only one the angels mention. But the rest of the time, he has these dreams, and he responds positively to each dream and does what he is told in those dreams. Now, whether an angel appears in time, it, it doesn't say. But I think that's important. And maybe Joseph, that, that both Joseph's fathers were named Jacob as well, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, so he may have reflected a lot on his counterpart in the Old Testament. So, well, yeah, look at Joseph, you know, and how he responded to the dreams. And, and how long does he live with the shame, like you're saying? Just I keep guess going with it forever? He would yeah. live with it until he died. Yeah. Because he would be with Mary. We're assuming, you know, he died uh, somewhere along the, in that 30-year period afterwards. Uh, and Mary, uh, when you look at it, uh, of course, she has other sons and daughters, so there's, there is... Uh, some relief there, and she's protected. And then, of course, Jesus on the cross says to John, behold your mother, so mm -hmm. there's that concern there as well. But she's bearing that shame, and, and, and Jesus is as well. And I think Joseph is giving the example to Jesus, because how many times do we read, well, we know who our father is, but we don't know who your father is, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so that criticism was there, kind of underlying some comments made uh, in different places and one pretty overt comment we don't know who your father is mm -hmm. so you know that they, they uh, you said they shame the community also and then there's the comment nothing good ever comes out of Nazareth is that part of the shaming of the community or is it already I don't again that's a uh, no one Nazareth is such an obscure place nobody really knows what's why, why it has that reputation. But it, uh, again, if you go back or go over to Luke 4, Jesus is preaching there. He, he says, I, I'm fulfilling the prophet Isaiah. He then mentions uh, Elijah and Elijah, the widow and, the, and Naaman, you know, and uh, both are, are uh, uh, Gentiles. And uh, there were many Israelites who had leprosy and many Israelites who were widows, but the prophets only went to the, the Gentiles and that just blew up the whole town and they wanted to throw them off the cliff. And so maybe there's some, it was a reputation where some place that you go there, they are really either very strict you know, to the point that you might not be the safest place to walk through if you say, hey, I got a friend who's a Gentile or a Roman soldier or that day. We'll throw you off a cliff because they didn't want to even hear that. So it, it's hard to say uh, again because of it, its obscurity. You think, you think the family shaming could be part of the reason that they couldn't find a place for him to sleep other than with the animals? No, I don't think that has. I think as they went into Bethlehem, there, there's a different reaction <coughs> okay. there. I think a more positive reaction. Um, I don't know. Of course not. You know, news travels. <laughs> so, but be, Joseph being his hometown and people knowing his character, they might just say, well, yeah, this is what Joseph would do, type of thing. So, I don't, I think Bethlehem would be a different story. Uh, and I think some of that has to do with David. And, and it's his, it has a history, and we can look at its history. So, a little bit of it anyway. But, uh, yeah, Nazareth is such an obscure place, and and, uh, and it, it just you have to wonder. The, but I I think we see the same thing in different towns. You know, when you go to Texas and you have this town has this reputation, and the town that's fifty miles away has or ninety miles away has this reputation. How did that one get such a bad one? And they hit you know so you. It's almost like children from the same family. Isn't okay, it? there you go. <laughs> well, we don't want to get that person. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, how's the black sheep of the family? You know, we, we talked about that. Uh, so they don't go into much detail, uh, in, or Matthew doesn't, in, in 
in this. Uh, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Some uh, magi or wise men from the east uh, came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who was born king of the Jews? We saw the star when it rose and have come to worship him. That would really start, the, the worship part would really everybody in a turmoil because they've gone through 600 years of, uh, of occupation and captivity and before that the idolatry and everything else and they there is no way that this would be good news to anybody in Jerusalem we don't worship kings in Israel we just don't do that and so the city's thrown in turmoil and, and we read that uh, and, but you can you imagine these guys wandering around town uh, where's the newborn king of the Jews well, you know and, were they expected to be Herod? And so Herod had another son. Uh, Do you know the timing of them arriving? That's another, there's so much mystery in here. You know, it's a two-year kind of frame. Uh, I don't know what, again, how Herod counted. You know, preachers have their way of counting things. I'm sure kings do, too. Depending <laughs> <laughs> on what they want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's no uh, no indication. He's still alive, so if Herod, we, we think Herod died in 4 B.C., so it's maybe anywhere from 6 B.C. to 4 B.C. That, uh, now, did he die right after this? Again, that's another, you know, our, our dating calendar changes over the centuries have caused kind of, issues as to where these things are. Uh, the star, uh, that if you read, and especially this time of year, everybody's coming, what is a star? It's alignment of planets, it's a comet, it's, and you have all these, and they're really fascinating to read. In the end, it's not solvable in that sense. What's interesting is that in the Old Testament, and I don't know if I have a reference to it, and I need to look that up, but in some it refers to an angel. Mm -hmm. Maybe an angel snuck just kind of guided the, the appeared uh, in, in some form as a star. We don't they appear as humans, so why not a star? Travel along the pier again, they switch, change direction. So uh, it's kind of that kind of. I know uh, scientists try to figure, well, you know, if you look at it a certain way, it can see, be seen like it changed direction, or if at a certain time, you know, and it changed, and okay. But maybe it's just simply an angel. Or a star god just said, you go here, then go there. I mean, yeah, however you want to see that. In three, uh, three Herod and, uh, well, we'll get back to the wife. Herod uh, uh, is disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Basically, Herod is disturbed because he's disturbed. Uh, he is a, uh, he, he is an old guy now uh, and extremely paranoid. That's in contrast when he was a young guy, extremely paranoid. <laughs> so uh, he's already killed three sons. He's killed two wives, one who was his favorite. Uh, he has no problem inviting people to swimming parties and they have to drown. So uh, Herod is just a, a pretty rough character. And if you go back to Isaiah 7, you kind of get the same idea there with Ahaz and, and some other uh, comparisons uh, with Pharaoh. Uh, back in Moses' day, so there's a, there's a number of things. I think that Matthew's trying to pull out uh, over the course of the first five chapters. Uh, he calls the teachers together where they, where is the Messiah to be born? <laughs> Bethlehem uh, quotes Micah uh, chapter 5. Herod tells the, the Magi to go uh, there, gets the time, the exact time the star appeared. And so he's assuming when the star appeared, the birth occurred. Don't know. Go search carefully and come back. Now, as I said last week, Bethlehem is not a big place uh, in that day. It's, a, by, it's gone through a lot over the, over the course of uh, centuries. David's hometown, uh, shepherds, lots of shepherds. We talked about that. But then it's just a small uh, little hamlet maybe four or 500 people. Uh, how many pregnant women were there at that time? Um, <coughs> could have been as low as five or six, it could have been 10, it could have been 20. No one really knows uh, because we don't know the demographics. More than likely if you're shepherd, well, even that, you know, the older shepherds are out there too. So we, we really just don't know 
know how many are involved. It's not hundreds. We, we know that. Uh, so, uh, verse 9, uh, they heard the king, and again, the question comes through here is, why did they go to Herod first in the first place? Well, Herod is a, a Jewish king. He's made to and, and uh, get the right, Edom in the Old Testament, uh, Idinium in the New Testament. He was, uh, he came on my map, my great accurate map here, he came from about this area down here, which was the old Edom. Of, or the Edom of the Old Testament. So he was mixed, I think his dad married a Jew, and he married, <coughs> anyway, that's how they all. He was a king yet when Jesus was born. No, he was. He, was. he became king about roughly 37 BC, uh, under Rome, uh, Rome situation. He was a masterful politician. I mean, he found ways to stay out of, out of problems that would cause him problems. Uh, when Rome's civil wars occurred in 31 BC, uh, he managed to get out of that by starting a war with the Parthians. <laughs> we can take care of that, you know. And won, by the way. Uh, he uh, he when he when the opportunity, what side do you choose? He would tell. He ended up telling Augustus because Augustus Octavian was the one who won. You know, just remember how you know loyal I was. I am, you know, so he, he was a masterful politician. He did get himself in trouble at times. And uh, Augustus was the one who said, I would rather be one of Herod's pigs than one, than one of his sons. You know? oh. <laughs> he just killed Because he didn't have any qualms about getting rid of them. He didn't have qualms about getting rid of anybody. You know? <coughs> the, old, the, the old story, and it, I guess, uh, I think it's in Josephus, is that he wanted, on the day he died, he wanted uh, his people or his troops to go to Jericho, gather all the uh, religious leaders and uh, whoever, prominent citizens, get, put them in one place and kill them all so there'd be mourning in Israel when he died. <laughs> it does not make wow. any sense. I told you it's totally yeah. paranoid. Uh, so uh, let's see, where are we now? We, uh, they, they go to, the star shows up again. Uh, it rose, went to, stopped over the place where the child was. Uh, when they saw the star, they were overcome with joy or they, uh, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they bowed down and worshiped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So uh, they present their gifts. This is something else for Mary to ponder. Uh, it's not stated there, but obviously you're sitting there, you have your child, and all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and you open it, and the, here are these guys, and they're bringing gifts, and they're bowing down to your child. So who are these, these guys from the, wherever they came from? And... Uh, let me just say, we don't know how many there were, and they didn't travel, if, if there were you know, three, they didn't travel by themselves. They were probably had their own servants, they probably had uh, even soldiers from where they came from traveling because gold, frankincense, and myrrh are the most pretty expensive items of the day. So whoever these guys were, uh, or wherever they came from, they had a lot of riches with them. Now, when I say a lot, I'm not saying millions of dollars, but quite a bit that would uh, certainly be uh, beneficial to Joseph and Mary. So I drew this map. I'm uh, just for fun. This is the trade, some of the trade groups, which is this is probably <laughs> not the scale of any chart, but it's going to help. It's awesome. Some yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Anyway, uh, the most famous, of course, is the Silk Route from China going across through Babylon and then up into Asia Minor. So the blue part is the, the route? The blue part outlines the rivers and the... Oh, so oceans. the red part is the route? Uh, the red parts are the routes. Okay, yes. there. Thank you. Uh, and again, there's several ways they came across the desert. The Spice Route, uh, the purple is the shipping up and through these areas. Uh, then the land routes here. There's a... 
of crossing here, up through the desert here to uh, Gaza. Petro is the uh, primary uh, area. If you watch uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh -huh. no, that's not, not the, other, the other one. Uh, the Last Crusade, the last crusade. Uh, Indiana Jones' Last Crusade, the, when they go through that canyon and they come to this building, uh -huh. that's the treasury building in Petro. Now, there's no caves in there, okay? It's just one big <laughs> sand wall. You know, you can look in and see a sand wall, but uh, that's the treasury building. That's the first place you went to, to deposit your money or pay your taxes. And, uh, and again, the, the trade routes across Israel. Uh, this one, this is the King's Highway to Damascus. And again, they went through the deserts. I didn't put one here, but obviously there's routes to Alexandria in Egypt. So uh, those are some things there that would travel. Uh, depending on where the ships would come in or treasures would come in, they could travel anywhere in these areas. These two purple areas are basically, no one goes through there. Uh, they are, there's nothing there. You talk about desert and nothing. There, there's no place to stay. There's no, it's no just water. totally, uh, I don't even know what word you can describe. Uh, to uh, even today, they just avoid that area. There's no roads through it, anything, huh. because there's just nothing that you can do with it. Uh, it's just so out there, uh, well, like walking on the moon, I guess, you know, like the <laughs> thing is. So, anyway, but they knew how to get through the desert mm -hmm. yeah. in, in that area. Now, uh, Dwight uh, Longnecker came out with a book a couple of years ago called The Mystery of the Magi. And he argues, uh, in, in part, uh, that this area here, which is south of uh, Babylon, uh, and, and this area up here, uh, it was developed for a, uh, one of the Babylonian kings came here, liked it. There was a small town there. He decided he was going to live there. And he lived there about 10 years. And so it became a place where he ruled from and his son ruled from Babylon. And, uh, and so it appears it was rich in gold. So they had this along this trade route here. Frankincense and myrrh, this is South uh, Arabia. Today, Saudi Arabia. Uh, where's the soccer being played? Qatar. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that didn't end in here. I don't, anyway, Yemen is down here. Uh, the two frankincense and myrrh are grown here. One's a bush, one's a tree. They are the uh, best of the incense, of myrrh and frankincense. And then maybe a little competition just across in, into Ethiopia, uh, another area where uh, frankincense and myrrh grow. So you can see kind of where these things would come from. That doesn't mean the, whoever these wise men were went to down here to Yemen and picked up <laughs> frankincense and myrrh. It just means that's where uh, it would come from. And it's not something that's mass produced. Uh, it's a very limited source, so that makes it more expensive. Uh, the song, We Three Kings, uh, has to be sung, all five verses have to be sung to understand it. But each, one, each uh, item is described, the gold, the frankincense, the myrrh, uh, king, and then sacrifice and, mm. uh, and incense, that death, I think, one of them, and kind of wraps up with that verse. But anyway, that, that helps a little bit there. Uh, also, of interest, uh, a side note, uh, Longnecker says that when Abraham distributed his wealth, uh, he sent five sons, and if you didn't know this, Genesis 25, Verse one, he had five other sons, and they ended up in this area. Hmm. So there may be a connection with the wise men through both Abraham and Daniel. So the king who reigned, who moved down here, uh, Daniel, it was in the days of Daniel. So Daniel may have come with him rather than stay in Babylon hmm. because he was the chief of whatever, hmm. and so. There may, Daniel may have started a, some type of training or school, uh, which would not be uncommon. And people may have followed some of the things that Daniel said. And so where these wise men show up, 
uh, talking about a star and the king of the Jews, uh, they may have had more knowledge <laughs> of who, what's going on mm -hmm. than what we might think some pagans may have had. So that, now that's just speculation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like they were Zoroastrians is the other in Babylon, you know, that's the religion of, in that area. Yeah. I don't really like that one, or stargazers, I'm a little uh, questionable about that, but I think uh, there may have been some connection there, but that's my opinion. You can take it for what it's worth, which isn't very much. Certainly not an old frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> so, uh, they're warning the dream to go back another way. So We don't know which way they came, so we don't know which way they went back. Uh, we don't know where they're from, so it doesn't help us. But it just gives you an idea that there are trade routes all over the place, uh, and people could travel. Well, definitely, they were avoiding where Herod was, right? Right. They were certainly. Uh, and again, we don't. Uh, did they go to Petra up to Jericho, up to Jericho and cross over Jericho, or did they go across the God? I didn't put that. There probably should be a route in there. Across to Gaza and then up to Jordan. Uh, I don't think they would have cut across open territory where there are no roads. Uh, I think they would have followed the routes because they, you know, like they kind of suspicious. And you, apparently, they had friendly relations with Rome because they could get through there because Rome ruled that way. So would there have been by the, there would have been by themselves, would there? Oh no, there would have been. It'd have been a caravan. Uh, and depending on how many gathered to go, I, we like the three number, but uh, some suggest 12, we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But however many there were, they're gonna have armed guards and they're gonna have uh, servants. So they weren't gonna travel by themselves. Uh, uh, so that gets, uh, that takes care of the wise men of uh, which we know nothing about, and so everything that I just said meant whatever you want to take. Yeah. No, I meant when Joseph and Mary and Jesus left. Okay, now we, let's get to that. Oh, okay. Uh, in verse 14, uh, or verse, uh, I'm sorry, verse 13, when, uh, when they had gone, I was wrong, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So, again, an angel appears for a warning. Uh, obviously, Joseph was not afraid this time. <laughs> Getting kind of used to angels. Uh, so, Bethlehem is uh, about five miles from Jerusalem, southwest. It, they could have gone down to the main route and traveled. Obviously, this is going to be a couple with a baby. They're, f they're fleeing. But they have frankincense, myrrh, and gold. So, what do the wise men have done? They provided, God has provided them mm -hmm. with surviving in, uh, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So they had the ability, you know, did they get a donkey so she could ride a donkey? You know, I mean, they had the money now. They could do things. Um, again, so that they could get out of there. Another unknown thing is where they go in Egypt. We don't know. Alexander has had a lot of Jewish people in it. Down here somewhere is in the Nile River, that's that one line there, a place called Elephantine Island, Jewish population there. And then scattered around, there were some Jewish populations there. So they may have known somebody, or they may have just gone and said, we'll stop here because there's a Jewish community and we'll hide out with them. Uh, Herod was not a popular character. And the older he got, the worse, he, uh, most unpopular he became. So uh, anyway, any questions on that? Uh, don't know how long they spent there. This is another one of those wonderful things in the story. Comparison, again, with Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph is sold into slavery to Egypt. Joseph in the New goes to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Matthew's drawing out a, a, uh, the story, the Old Testament story. He's going to have a bad event. He's going to then have the wilderness uh, discussion in, in Matthew uh, 4. Jesus tests in the wilderness. Uh, he's going to have the Sermon on the Mount, Mount Sinai, Moses at Mount Sinai. So there's going to be some comparisons there. Jesus as a new Moses. 
coming out of Egypt and then leading the people to the promised land. And again, that would be wrapped up in the cross, the ascension, mm -hmm. the, the advent, the coming again of the Lord. Okay, let's see, where are we? Uh, so he took the child uh, and uh, during the night, during the night, left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. So uh, that's, that's part of what's going, going on here. Uh, again, travels that way. He, uh, then we have Herod going to Bethlehem because uh, obviously he was not happy that the uh, Magi outwitted him, uh, which it says here. And he was furious. He ordered all the boys killed in Bethlehem that were two years old and under. And again, uh, we don't know how many, uh, but it is in keeping with Herod's character. People say, well, we don't have that any other outside record who kill ever killing babies. Herod killed a lot of people, so we don't have a record of everybody he killed, but he killed people. If he could kill three sons and two wives, babies aren't a problem, okay? I, I, let's just face it, I mean, the guy was mad. Uh, in other ways. Mm -hmm. In all the ways of mad, madness. Uh, he may have been a great builder, but he was, uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, it fulfills the prophecy of Jeremiah, which is from chapter 31. Uh, and it, it, when we, uh, he says, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and uh, refusing to be comforted because they are no more, is, a, is an idea of, again, the captivity, uh, 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 exile, exile. They've been sent into exile. They're no more. It's also Rachel was connected with Bethlehem. She was buried there, and that was Joseph. No, I'm sorry, that was Jacob's wife. So there's a connection there. And then uh, verse 19: Herod died. Angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. That angel was busy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of dreams. Uh, and you, uh, Joseph doesn't talk in any of this. Have you noticed that? He doesn't say a word. Uh, uh, one, I read a little article yesterday. Uh, and the fellow said, Old Joe. Here's uh, uh, Old Joe. He, uh, not old in you know, <laughs> that sense, but he was just a, a, a character. He didn't say anything, he was just an ordinary guy. Who did extraordinary things? Uh, he just uh, he, he, he trusted God. He took on the shame that went with Mary. He <laughs> did what the angel said, but he never said a word about it. He just did it. He's just an ordinary guy. Nobody knows much about Joseph. We know more about Mary, but he just had this uh, way of doing things. Uh, Take, the, take up the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. Not just Herod, but those who are trying to take the child's life. Which makes me think that they've spent some time in Egypt. It wasn't just Herod they were afraid of. Or it wasn't just Herod that was the problem. There were some others who were problems. And for some reason, they ended up all dying in some short period of space of time. How many, you know, they did three or four, or two or three, or something like that. So they stayed there uh, until the angel fell out of the back. But then again, there's this next dream. So he got up, took the child and his mother, but when they got to uh, Israel, or the land of Israel, uh, they were, uh, the Arch uh, Arch Archelaus was uh, reigning instead of his father. Uh, they were afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. So they traveled back, and guess where they go? Instead of going to Bethlehem, and uh, again, how did they get there? Did they go all the way to Bethlehem, or did they, uh, and then decide to go up north, or did they go up the, the, uh, the, the western route uh, along the coast? Uh, so again, we don't know. Ended up, uh, and again, I didn't put Nazareth in here. Uh, this little unknown name right about there is where Nazareth is. <laughs> roughly, and so uh, that's where they went. Back 
where? To the problem. And you would have to wonder why. So I, the only thing I can say, Mary's family or Joe's parts of Joseph's family were there. And they would have to endure everything that was involved in that. What may be interesting is they may have had one or two more kids by the time they got back. You know, and that may have kind of calmed things down. But again, these are speculations. There's a lot. We, we have this wonderful story that this time of year, we like all the <coughs> nice little figures, but we don't have any songs about hair killing babies. Mm -hmm. Actually, there is one. <laughs> but uh, we, we don't really sing those songs. We don't sing a song about Harry. Oh, Harry killed a baby. You know, uh, we don't have the, uh, the idea of the shame and honor. Oh, Mary was a, take the term, it was a slaughter, something like that. You know, we don't, uh, we don't sing about that. Uh, but that's how some people name a Hubert. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with Joseph? What's the matter with the guy? He's crazy. Why would you even think about marrying him? And there's a scene in uh, in one of my favorite Chris, uh, birth movies, the the uh, nativity. Uh, Mary and Joseph are getting ready to leave uh, Nazareth to head to Bethlehem and. Mary says to Joseph, uh, well, at least I'm going uh, <laughs> to mock anymore. You know, as they get on the, she gets on the donkey and takes up, they take off. So, you know, you kind of get that, that impression there. All right, that's uh, some of the things, uh, some of the background that may or may not be helpful, but uh, there's a lot of things the Bible tells us about it, but there's a whole lot we have no idea about. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in our stories, we tend to compact everything. You look at a manger scene, You've got the shepherds, you've got the wise men, you've got the angel, uh, the star, all compacted down around that. In reality, this thing may have been four or five years spread apart. Well, two years spread apart, and even further by the time we get finished with the whole story. Do we know how long the Herod was killed baby? Was it a two-year span? Or was it well, the, they just say two uh, Herod said any kid that was two years and younger. No, but how long after? How that? long was the killing spree? Yeah, how long? Oh, after they just went in one day. Oh, it was just one. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, we're not talking again. We're not. We're not looking at a city like uh, Jerusalem, okay. you know, where you have to go one. You, you can't. Hide. How do you? You just go in and, uh, with about <coughs> two dozen troops, and it pretty well mm -hmm. takes care of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they only did it one day. Yeah, they, it's a small village. Yeah. I mean, five hundred people. Who did it. Long I was going to know if everybody leaving. Oh, okay. no, I just want to say that uh, I read, I can't remember the name, like, you know, the guy, uh, remember the author, but he was saying that uh, when when Jesus' birth, well, at least when he was born in Nazareth or Bethlehem, wherever he was born, it was setting up that backdrop that the uh, current day. Uh, uh, Judaizers were saying, "Well, my king is coming out of a, you know, city where David was in, and he has a mother and father, and he is wealthy, and yeah. he's a perfect example of a king." But didn't Jesus' birth just contradict all of that and went the opposite direction? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that that was a uh, right. I think the birth was planned by God that uh, once He comes to yeah. come to see you. Everything was opposite. Right. You have shepherds coming who are poor. You have wise men coming who are rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so everybody came. You, Jack? Uh, the the people who thought of Mary in that way that you know mm -hmm. she wasn't necessarily pious or anything. Who would those people be? Maybe any. It could be any. You know, any, you just think about how people. Some people would say, even within the, a. Uh, Christian community, if a, a if a girl gets pregnant out of wedlock, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be those who will say, oh, her parents, you know, they. Okay. I can see how that would happen, you know, or she was just the way she dressed, you know, and then you start having all those little criticisms. Okay, so but even then, within, okay. Yeah, oh yeah. I thought with you know outside of that. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it spread eventually because again, when you get to the Pharisees. They never explore how where Jesus was born. They just mm -hmm. assumed he was born in Nazareth because he was called Jesus. You know, he was from 
Nazareth, and uh, they didn't ask the question, well, were you born there? You know, I mean, I could say I'm from Texas. So, were you born there? Well, no. <laughs> you know, so, but I'm from Texas. Yeah, in fact, that's what we did in Germany when we were on a tour. And they asked, where are you from? Texas? You know, nobody asked us, you know, well, not really. You know, I was born in New Jersey. Girls were born in Maryland, and she was born in Kansas City. And uh, so, you know, but Texas, yeah. So, but yeah, it would be, uh, later on the Pharisees got into it and then they, they continued the... Uh, okay, because I know some religions see Jesus as a prophet. So I'm like, do, if they see him as a prophet, do they see his mother as something? I'm like, okay, so he can be a prophet with a mother that, you know, so that, I just... That's a whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But was he really a prophet then? It, who had See, they, they had developed their idea of what they expected. Mm -hmm. And we do too. We, do. we expect yes. people to be certain ways. Preachers, yes. oh, he... Well, he grew up in the church. He did this thing. Uh, when he got the best grades, and uh, you know that's what we expect. But if a, a, a guy came in here and said, "Well, uh, I was converted in prison, and uh, after murdering a person, but now I'm preaching," you know, would we hire? Mm -hmm. And my wife, he might say, "Well, my wife and I, he, she was a prostitute, but she's changed too." Would you marry? Would we, can we be your preacher? You know, what kind of what kind of response will we have to that? <laughs> All right, it's time to go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>